congratulations for being admitted to BU Wheelock. Um, we're just going to go and introduce ourselves and then we can get started with the programming. Hi, so my name is Elizabeth Zala. I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Student Services at BU Wheelock and I work with all undergraduate students um, with their time through their program. So I do advising during the summer and then if there are any questions or concerns throughout the school year um, and I oversee all the student groups. So you'll see a lot of me um, if you get involved. Good morning. Uh, my name is Maureen Desmond. I'm the Senior Student Service Coordinator here at BU Wheelock College of Education and Human Development. Um, part of my role is to meet with prospective students, so probably have corresponded with some of you, um, and it's really nice to see you face to face. So welcome. Hi everybody, my name is Paul Hastings and I'm the Director of Student Services and um, that means I oversee all of the programs and services that help students like yourselves basically meet their goals, their academic goals, move through their program, access resources. Um, we work with undergraduates, graduate students, students on the BU campus and students who are taking classes remotely. So we're kind of the um, one-stop shop and you'll learn a lot more about this in today's presentation, but welcome. So now if um, we have Dean's hosts that are joining us, which are current students, and then we have prospective students. So if you all want to introduce yourselves with your name, pronoun, major hometown, and just something that you might want to do when you get out of quarantine, um, that would be great just so we know who's here. All right, I can start us off. Um, my name is Noelle. I use she, her, hers pronouns. My major is special education here at BU Wheelock, and I also have a minor in political science in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm a senior this year, and I'm originally from the Minneapolis area of Minnesota, so that's where I am today. Um, and when I first leave quarantine, I really just want to like go out to a restaurant with all of my friends and go out to eat and be with everyone. And yes. <laughs> Okay, I'll go next. Um, so my name is Emma, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a math education major with a minor in special education in BU Wheelock. Um, I'm from Marlboro, Massachusetts, which is fairly close to Boston. Um, but the first thing that I want to do when I leave quarantine is go back to Boston. <laughs> okay, so one of our other teams just wants to go next. I can, I can go. go. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rebecca. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I'm also a math education major and I'm from Newton, Massachusetts. And the first thing I want to do when I leave quarantine is probably just see friends, honestly doing anything, but I miss everyone. So that'll be nice. Um, my name is Catherine. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm majoring in special education and trying to minor in deaf studies. And I'm from Vienna, Virginia. And the first thing I want to do when I leave quarantine is probably, um, yeah, probably hang out with friends. Um, but I also really want to like go to a gym because I'm trying to work out alone and I have no motivation. So I really want to go somewhere where I can like make myself work out. Um, hi, my name is Serena. I also use she, her, her, hers pronouns. Um, my major is math education with the, um, at BU Wheelock with a minor in computer science in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, my hometown is Lexington, Massachusetts. And the first thing that I would do when I leave quarantine is go to a coffee shop with my friends. Cause it's something that we always did um, at BU and I just can't wait to do that again. There you go. Um, hi, I'm Veronica. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm studying social studies education and special education in the Wheelock. I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts, so really close to campus. And the first thing I want to do when I leave quarantine is go to my summer house on Cape Cod because my mom won't let us go until this is all over. <laughs> Hi, my name is Katie. I'm a sophomore studying math education. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm from Mawa, New Jersey. So it's a little bit further away than Boston than Cambridge. And then the first thing I wanna do when I leave quarantine is go see my cousins because I'm used to seeing them all the time. So that's what I wanna do. Great, awesome. So we will um, get started. So we're gonna hand it over to Paul who's gonna just talk about 
our guide star and then we'll get into the flow of the presentation and feel free to ask questions along the way. Yeah, thanks Liz. Um, I really just wanted to share um, with you folks today a little bit about who we are and, and um, sort of the work that we've undertaken this, this past year. Um, Wheelock has been in kind of an exciting phase. Uh, we decided about a year ago to create a new guide star. And a guide star is sort of like a mission for our college. And we invited people from all across the United States to come and talk to us about their work. So we had folks come from universities and small colleges, health organizations, social service agencies. And, and basically they helped us think about our questions about who we are and what we wanted to be. And after a lot of work, committee work and, and guest speakers, we as a community wrote our new guide star. And I just wanted to share that with you. It's transforming the systems that impact learning and human development for a thriving, sustainable, and just future in Boston and beyond. And why is this important? It really helps our community to define itself and it helps us to align um, along a certain kind of mission that's important to all of us. We have been working for many, many, many years in school settings and social service uh, agencies and whatnot, but this really helps to describe what it is that's most important to us, and it helps students to give a focus to their work. So whether you're gonna be staying in Boston or going back to a community beyond Boston, it's nice to know that our community is defined by something as important as this is. I also wanted to share um, the mission of our student services office. So the student services team is here to engage and empower you to develop and achieve your academic and professional goals. And again, you'll hear a lot more about this from Liz and Maureen, but we're, we're here as a guide. We're here to help you move through your program. And our office is that one-stop shop. And we want you to know that even though you're coming to a large university, our community is small. We have high touch point with students and it's easy to access us when you need help or any kind of support. To learn a little bit more about our community, I'd like to invite you to, to visit our student, uh, admitted students website. And here you'll see a message from our Dean, Dr. David Chard. And Dean Chard has created this message, again, to give you a sense of who we are as a, as a community, what's special about us, and a little bit about what we hope to accomplish as we move forward in this kind of new phase with our, with our new guide star. So I just wanna again, welcome you to our community on behalf of the administration and, and student services as well, and um, have a great program. Thanks, Paul. I um, just wanted to include a photo of campus because if you've been there, you know how beautiful it is. Um, and if you haven't been there, this is um, the Charles River campus. It's a mile long, mile and a half long on Com Ave. And we are on the far end of it where my Bitmoji is. Um, but it's really beautiful and we wish we were there now. Awesome. So uh, kind of what Maureen said, we're going to just break it down into academics and student life um, and then feel free to ask questions again as we want to make sure that all of your questions are answered today um, and we'll get started. So we wanted to provide a little overview of our college. So um, our college is the Wheelock College of Education and Human Development. Uh, we do have a nickname, BU Wheelock, um, that we will use throughout the presentation. Um, so we are named after Lucy Wheelock. She was a pioneer in the late 1800s, um, the kindergarten movement. So a huge advocate for early childhood education. Uh, we are the first and only uh, school here at BU named after a woman. So we're very proud about that. Um, we have a small undergraduate population of about 300 students. We do have graduate programs here at BU Wheelock, um, about a thousand students, but all in all, we have a, one of the smallest communities within the university. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities to get to know your peers, your staff and faculty members um, because we're one of the smallest. And then we have about 10 undergraduate majors and several minors as well. And then Liz will touch on this in a couple minutes, um, but we have an exciting new opportunity starting in fall 2021 um, that will broaden our horizons of options to, to explore. 
So we also wanted to touch about resources because as you transition to BU or college life in general, um, we wanna make sure that you are aware of all the supports that are available to you. So here at BU Wheelock, um, Liz and I and Paul are a member of the student services team. We have a few others in our office and we are the staff that are dedicated to supporting your success through your four years. Um, we really are here to help you navigate all of your resources and academic and student life. Um, there are faculty advisors, so you will be assigned a faculty advisor over the summer, um, and they're the experts in the field. They will act as your mentors and your guides. Um, they're the professional experts, so they oftentimes are um, involved in research and are practitioners as well as your course instructors um, for your program. And then we have the Office of Professional Preparation, and they are the experts in licensure. So if you're seeking license um, in Massachusetts or another state, they can help you guide um, through that process. And they also help students support um, preparation for student teaching and practicum experiences. So being out in the field and getting that hands-on learning is something that we really value here at BU Wheelock, and they're the experts to help guide that process. And then as a BU Wheelock student, of course, you're a Boston University student, so you have access to a multitude of resources at the university level. These are a couple on the screen. Um, so if you're looking for assistance in you know, uh, time management or um, you know, stress uh, management opportunities, uh, if you are looking for resume building skills, you'll have opportunities here at all these resources to access. Um, so feel free to explore these um, as you're making a decision whether or not BU is a good fit for you. Um, there's certainly a lot available to our students. And now we're gonna talk about academics. Awesome. So we just want to highlight um, kind of the four things that you can expect uh, as a BU Wheelock student. Um, we have a very rigorous academic program. So the Dean's host will talk about this more, but we really, um, we are, as we grant state licensure or endorse state licensure. So we work closely with the state to ensure that our academics are on par with what it is going to be, what you need to be ready to be a teacher. Um, so we also have extensive field work because we believe that is a, a key component to being a teacher is being in the fields and working with students and working within a classroom setting. So there's lots of opportunities to get in the classroom early and often is often what we say. Um, and Paul and Maureen have alluded to this, but because we are such a small, um, community. Uh, we're pretty close. We know when you walk in the building, you'll definitely see people that you have classes with, whether they're staff or faculty or friends. Um, and that just means that you have a lot of access to your faculty and staff. Um, again, I feel like Maureen and I are the undergraduate folks in the student services team. So you'll see a lot of us, our offices are on the first floor of Two Silver Way. And um, we're involved in a lot of things that go on like I advise the Ed House, so if you are looking for specialty housing um, and we oversee the student groups and things like that. So we are pretty um, available, basically. So um, the other thing is just that we, with the, Paul talking about the Guide Star, is just that we have a commitment to our community and really being an active and involved community. Um, we like to do a lot of hands-on learning, but we also want to be in the community and um, representing and giving back. So these are just kind of bullet points that talk about how we want to make a positive impact on others. And that's really what drives our programs. Um, and so all of you were admitted to one of these programs. Um, that's no surprise, uh, but the one thing that I want to highlight here is that we will have a new program in the fall of 2021, which will be, um, which you will ha all have access to if you decide that this might be what you want to do. But sometimes students will get into the classroom and then be like, oh, I'm not sure that I really want to be a classroom teacher, but I really like working with kids, or I really like the counseling aspect, or I really like um, 
working with kids with behavioral disorders and I might want to do something in that field versus um, one of the things listed here. So we've designed a new program that will be coming out in fall 2021 and it's all about a one track major. I'm sorry, a one major, then you go into different tracks. So you can still go into education or these other avenues um, like child life. So working in a hospital, other things that are really serving um, social service nature, or human development nature. So that will be something that'll be coming out in the fall. So um, stay tuned. If that's something that sounds interest to you, um, we'll be able to um, advise on that. And then just, we have a lot of minors. Um, I know that our deans hosts have mentioned minors that they have, we have minors within VLOC. None of these lead to licensure. Um, that's the key difference, but um, they can kind of help your studies go deeper into one of these topic areas, um, which can help with um, focusing your interest areas. And then one other thing that I just wanted to highlight about academics, not to get in the weeds, um, but just as a cool function is that we have the hub, which is our new general education curriculum. So we've decided that math and history and, and science, just taking two of those courses throughout your time in college isn't enough anymore. Um, that to be a good global engaged citizen that we need to think more um, broadly and think about different areas in which we can explore. So with BU being such a large university, we have all of these amazing courses taught by all these amazing faculty, but have been limited by um, just the general education curriculum. So we have, we broke it all out. And so an example is that you would take us, you have to do a scientific inquiry course. And I just did some quick searching on the hub core search and some of those courses that could meet that requirement are like alien worlds or gender and sexuality or linguistics, which is pretty cool when you think about, you might think that you have to do a bio course or you have to do a chem course. Of course, if that's your interest area, we want you to take those courses, but we also want you to be able to engage with this information in a very different way. Um, so that's one of the really cool features of the hub and it's across all colleges, um, which our previous curriculum wasn't, so it's pretty cool you get to meet a lot of new people. Um, and then the Dean's Souls are gonna talk more about this, but just to really highlight that we focus a lot on experiential learning. So you get in early and often, you'll get in your first year with intro to education. Um, and then throughout your time, again, these are listed there. Uh, one thing that is pretty cool is that we have a Jumpstart program, which is nationally recognized. It's an AmeriCorps branch. Um, so you can use this in place of your ED 110 um, placement, which is an all day Thursday. But if you do Jumpstart, you'd be working um, in a Head Start program in the greater Boston area. So this is working with um, preschoolers who are in under resourced areas and you help them with literacy. Research has shown that um, kiddos that don't have exposure to literacy early on can have impacts on their education later. So this is really all about getting in and helping those kids um, get a jump start on their education. So um, it's a really cool program and it, it like you can do work study and things like that. So we just like to highlight that because it's a really cool opportunity. And again, it's experiential learning um, that you get to do. And I'm gonna hand it over to Noelle and Emma who will um, talk more about academics. Okay, awesome, thank you. So we just kind of wanted to take a little bit of time to chat with you and um, talk about the experiences we have and also um, bring you into the conversation if you wanna talk about the experiences that you've had in high school. Um, so to our Dean's hosts, you can answer both or either one of these questions for a bit to start off. Um, so what has been your favorite class at BU Wheelock and or what has been an impactful experiential learning opportunity that you've had in your time here? So whoever wants to start. I can start. Um, so my favorite class at BU Wheelock so far has been ED 110, which I think is gonna be a big a popular answer, which is intro to education. And that has actually led to me to my most impactful experiential learning opportunity, I guess, which is just going out into the field. And I was placed in a middle school math classroom, which actually made me decide to switch from high school to middle school. So that was a big thing because that 
changed my whole course of learning and what I want to do in the future. So. Thanks, Katie. I can go next. Um, my favorite class at BU Wheelock was probably um, Methods of Teaching Math. I had a really knowledgeable professor um, that taught me a lot of things that I didn't realize kind of went into teaching math. Um, and similarly, my most meaningful experience happened in that class where we were able to practice some micro teachings um, in front of a group of our peers. And I was able to lead a math lesson in a way I never really thought about. So it was more discussion based. Um, and I was able to utilize a lot of the things that we learned in that class. And I found it was really productive um, way of introducing me to teaching it. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. I also took that class and can also um, say that I also love that one. It's a really great class. Um, and all of the secondary ed majors and the elementary and special ed, really all of our um, education majors will take classes like that, the methods classes where you're learning um, how you're going to be doing things in the classroom and how to write lesson plans and you get to practice teaching. Um, so there are specific classes for each major like that. Um, if we have somebody else who wants to speak as well. Um, yeah, so my favorite class at BU Weblock is uh, teaching algebra. Uh, so similar to what Rebecca was saying, um, it's like a methods class because I was able to see like a lot of hands-on activities on how to teach algebra, which um, is different from like just learning formulas. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and my most impactful experiential learning opportunity was um, I was able to connect with one of my professors and get involved in her research. And that was definitely impactful for me because I was able to like watch videos of teachers teaching and being able to analyze different teaching styles and help me learn um, how to like fine tune my teaching style. Awesome, thank um, you. I can share. Um, my favorite class so far has been disability education and public policy. Um, it's a special education course and it was the first like real special education course that I took after adding um, my second licensure in special ed and I for the same reasons that everybody else like I loved my professor I thought the content was really interesting like I was never bored in class and I learned so many things that I didn't know like even coming in feeling like I already knew some things about special education um, and then my most impactful experiential learning um, experiential learning yeah was from 8110 I was placed in a special ed classroom in my ED110 class, even though I haven't officially like wanted to do special ed yet. Um, and I just thought that it was really cool. I was in the sixth grade classroom in Lexington and I loved it, like everything about it. And it, it made me want to add my second licensure and it was really fun. Thanks, Veronica. Um, for any of our admitted students, is there anything you want to know about academics here at BU Wheelock or have there been any experiences that you guys have had out in schools or anything like that that has got you interested in education and BU Wheelock that you want to share? She wants to be an educator but she's unsure about what age or subject area she wants to teach. Would it be feasible for me to switch majors as necessary to accommodate for any changes in my attended path? Has have any dean so so um it is feasible to change your major. Um, it's easier to do it earlier than later, of course, um, because once you get up into the um, your sophomore year and stuff, you're knee deep in more of the content. But for example, if you want to teach elementary ed um, and you switch down to early childhood education, it's a little bit easier um, because elementary ed and special ed probably are um, more lockstep programs because of the licensure requirements mandated by the state. Um, but we can work together over the summer um, and your faculty advisor will work, will, will work with you. Um, ED 110 is the great place to decide. Um, like, every, you know, Veronica said, um, and Katie said that, you know, once you're in ED 110, you kind of solidify what you're most interested in. So after you take ED 110, you can definitely decide this way or that way, or if you're still unsure, we can work together and kind of figure that out. Um, and you don't necessarily have to decide. And then also because the fall 2021 program is available, which um, we talked about earlier, you can always then 
opt to go to that program, which will open up um, the opportunities to not be streamlined into one um, page. That's a good question. Awesome. So we want to talk a little bit about student life. So on campus living and things like that. Um, the first thing is residence hall options. So um, on the Charles River, which is our main campus, um, there are a lot of different opportunities to live on campus. You'll see a couple of pictures here. Um, the bottom where I'm circling is uh, Warren Towers. It's in central campus and a lot of first year students choose to live there um, as it's you know, the, the location is really the hub of um, the Charles River campus. So there's a lot of activity. It's a great way to meet um, other first year students. Um, and the top right corner, you have the education house. Um, and this is a really great opportunity because it's only for students who are majoring or minoring at BU Wheelock or show an interest in education and human development. Um, so you are able to apply to live here it's a very short application um, in addition to the housing survey um, that we'll talk about a little bit later. But this is a good way for you to live in an area with like-minded folks. So people who are studying education or human development um, that understand what you're going through in field experiences and in the classroom. Um, so it's about a 30 person, um, 30 bed uh, location and um, it's just a really great place to live. It's really close to our main building. Um, so it's on Bay State Road. It's a beautiful brownstone um, and it's, it butts our uh, Silver Way, which is where our main building is. So it's a quick walk. And so um, FISOP, um, Liz is gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, we do have a video here that you can click on if someone wants a copy and put it in the chat um, to have a video, but Liz, do you want to talk a little bit about FISOP? Yes. So FISOP is this amazing program where um, you get to move in a week early. So you get settled into the room um, that you've been placed in. And then you're participating in service opportunities around the greater Boston area. So you get to know the neighborhoods really well. Um, and you get to know kind of someplace else other than Com Ave. Uh, while also getting to know ComAv really well. So um, you get to make friends and I think every single person that's ever done FISOP is in love with it. Um, they've had really amazing opportunities. They make lifelong friends there. So it's a really nice way to get to know the campus. Um, you get comfortable early on um, and the video is linked there, but it's a pretty cool opportunity. Also, we learned that they made this FISOP image and then they realize it's not even the city of Boston. So that's hilarious, but yeah. So in addition to FISOP, there's an opportunity um, through our transitional mentor program to really acclimate to BU Wheelock uh, and college life in general. Um, it can be a huge trans transition from high school uh, if you've never lived away from home. Um, so transitional mentor program, um, there it's designed to match first year students with upperclassmen. A lot of our Dean's hosts today have participated or are participating in this program um, as mentors. So they really act as guides through your entire first year. Um, Serena is one of the co-coordinators this year, so if you want to chime in, feel free to do so, or um, you can connect with her after our presentation, but it's a really amazing program. There's a lot of fun um, activities that they plan, um, but it's really all about an, an extra support system for you during your first year. You can follow them on Instagram. Um, they have some fun pictures posted. <laughs> And then we have lots of study abroad opportunities. So um, you can participate in regular study abroad through BU, but then we also have an opportunity for student teaching abroad. So we have these three locations in which you can go and teach in an American school. So you're still meeting licensure requirements, but you're gonna be able to experience um, life in these three different countries, which is a really cool opportunity because not everyone um, is able to do that um, when they're pursuing education. So we just like to highlight that as a really awesome opportunity. 
And then we also wanted to highlight that we have fun as the Student Services Office. We uh, facilitate a lot of community events. Um, you'll see a couple pictures of the lobby in our main building at Two Silver Way. Um, so we really try to be intentional about providing opportunities to get to know you all um, and for you to get to know us and the resources that are available to you. Um, so we do have a lot of fun. Liz made um, some mocktails last semester. We have food pretty much at every event to draw you in um, but it's just a really good opportunity for you to build your community here um, by attending these sorts of events and meeting other um, peers i also got approval to do goodie bags um, for the fall so when you all come onto campus we'll be able to um, give you goodie bags to get to see because we didn't get to see you during this virtual time um so that'll be another fun opportunity and then we have the newsletter it's called the wheel we're very creative here in student services so um it's a really nice platform that kind of um kind of encompasses the most important things that are happening um that month so we have fun things about like headspace to um important things that are happening on campus if there are virtual events if they're on campus events uh things like that uh tips and tricks of the trade if you will i think this past month we had um cheap recipes to make with what's in your pantry so things like that um that we think might be important to you as students So now we're just going to talk about student life and the Dean's host, you can take it away and um, share a little bit about your personal experiences. Um, okay, Dean Toast, so same thing. Um, any or all of these questions, what clubs and organizations are you involved in on campus? What residence halls are available for first year students? And have you studied abroad? And if so, where? I'm going to jump in really quickly first because I think I'm the only Dean Sos here who has lived in the education house. So I'm just going to plug that really quickly. Um, like Maureen was saying, the education house is um, a specialty housing community here on BU's campus that's for education and human development majors here at BU. And it's honestly just such an incredible place to live. I lived there my first two years at BU and it was a really great way for me to get to know upperclassmen who are also studying education who were just super supportive and really helpful and they really just kind of like took me under their wing and it's how I made a bunch of friends and I always felt like I had people I could like talk to when I was stressed out about classes or anything really so it's a really great community to live in and be a part of so would highly recommend and it's a beautiful brownstone that overlooks the charles river so like what could go wrong there so it's awesome <laughs> um, okay so i can go next uh, the clubs that I'm involved in I'm in BU Wheelock is the Transition Mentor Program. I'm the co-coordinator. Um, it's a super great program because uh, we pair mentors with mentees, like one, one to two mentees per mentor. And we have super fun events, like um, the first week we have the Amazing Race, where uh, first years can do a bunch of fun riddles and kind of get to know um, all of BU campus. And then we have a Weeks of Welcome with a bunch of fun events like Ruby night, craft night. Um, we had a Red Sox game this year, which is super fun. Um, and then my, the residence hall that I stayed at was Warren Towers. It was super great because I was able to meet people from different majors too. And I always just like left my door open and it was a really easy way for me to make friends and it, it made me feel super welcome. I have not studied abroad. Thanks, Serena. Um, I can talk about West Campus. I lived in Rich Hall freshman year um, in one of those three dorms overlooking Nickerson, and I loved it. I, I think I especially liked it because after my classes ended during the day, I felt like I was separated from like my classwork and my academics for a little bit, even if it was just like in my dorm. And the walk isn't as far as everybody actually thinks it is. It's actually really nice when it's nice out. Um, and I liked kind of being close to Nickerson and like where the gym is and things like that. Um, so, yeah. 
Awesome. Thanks, Veronica. I also lived in West my freshman year, and I can attest that the walk is not as far as you think as well. Um, there's also a shuttle, though. So if you don't want to do the walk every morning or if you're coming home, you know, later from a night class, there is a shuttle that you can get on and that'll take you around campus. I can go ahead. Um, as well as being involved with BU Wheelock as a Dean's host, and I was a transitional mentor last semester, I'm also pretty involved with our um, BU Hillel, which is our Jewish life on campus. Um, so basically, that's just a really good way to get connected to the community if you see fit. Um, I was able to travel with them to Israel, to Brazil, and I was supposed to go to Argentina this year, but that got canceled. Um, and I know there are a lot of tight niche communities within BU that if you feel like you need to find a community like that, there's plenty of opportunities to do that. Um, and everyone's had good experiences. I can go. Um, so I'm a transitional mentor at BU as well. And um, to go along with FISOP, because I know we talked about that, I did it my freshman year and it really drove my passion for community service. So my freshman year, I joined a community service sorority on campus, which has been really great because um, there's so many opportunities for me. You can do up to 20 hours a semester. And so I just kind of have gone places that I went for FISOP or places that I could have gone for FISOP. And I'm one of two people from Wheelock within the community sor service sorority. So if you like want to meet new people, that's a good way, like joining new clubs outside of Wheelock, but also staying within the close knit community is really great as well. And then for residence halls, I also lived in Rich. And it's really great if you're someone who likes to have like a more campus feel because it feels like you're leaving the busy city of Boston and you're kind of like in a little area where all the other freshmen are. And it's really great, um, especially if you also need to be focused during the day and you're not, if, and you're worried that you're going to go back to your room and like get distracted, I would stay on East all day and then go home. And then I would feel like really at home and ready to settle in. So Wes is a great option if you're thinking of that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to say too, in terms of um, clubs and organizations that you can join, if you're not really sure what you want to do yet or if when you get to campus you're kind of feeling overwhelmed with like how many options there are um we have a big club and organization fair it's called splash and it's at the beginning of the year at the beginning of september um and you get to walk around this field that we're talking about in west campus um and you just get to look at all these different tables and talk to people from these clubs and organizations and write your email down if you want to get more information and then you can join what you want to join and you can also not join things um, and BU Wheelock also has a smaller version of that even before the big one happens and you get to learn about all of the very specific clubs and organizations within BU Wheelock. So you have lots of opportunities to learn more about these things and decide um, what's right for you. Uh, do any of our admitted students, do you have any questions about student life or residence hall or anything or want to share with us at all anything you're involved in in your high schools that you're hoping to still be involved in? Um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or you can pop in the chat if you want to. We'd love to hear from you. An education Educators Rising Club, I'm in the high school chapter. Um, so I know that there was one. Um, I was a part of it my first year, um, my freshman year here at BU Wheelock. I think that it still exists, but I think it's on a smaller scale right now. Um, so yes, we do have one. I just think that it's one of our smaller organizations in BU Wheelock. Um, we do have some other different um, clubs, though, that are kind of similar to that, where um, you still have, you also have like an opportunity to go into schools and also just think about education on a different level. So we have like a peer health exchange where you um, go and teach students about health and stuff like that, which is really great. Um, and there are other opportunities like that too. I said, what do we lock students usually do during the summers? Are there internship opportunities or does that happen throughout the year? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm involved in research on the Wheel campus. Um, so over the summer, that's kind of what I do is I will analyze the videos. I come up with questions for uh, further research during the year. So for summers, we don't, so at BU lock is not, we don't mandate summer courses and there aren't necessarily 
um, demanded internship opportunities, but there are opportunities to get involved on campus. We have lots of student leadership positions throughout the summer. So it's anything from a student facilitator, which leads orientation to um, Time to Be You, which you'll hear more about this summer, um, which is kind of talking about your trajectory to BU and why you chose BU. Um, there's lots of opportunities to get involved in kind of like peer educators, what um, Noah was saying, it's different, but it's through student health organization um, that they have opportunities like that. So there are lots of opportunities to stay on campus if you want. Um, you can also take summer classes if you, if that's something that you're interested in. There are lots of different ways that you can get involved. And then also talking with your faculty advisor if you want to do something over the summer with research, like Serena said, um, you can definitely explore those options. Basically, there is no limit to the opportunities, um, but there's nothing that's mandatory to do during the summer. I also want to quickly add that Boston, the greater Boston area, is um, just a hub for a lot of education and healthcare opportunities as well. So, like Liz said, your faculty advisor or your instructors might be a great resource to see what they're doing um, or if they have connections, they're often well connected. Um, but we do have a lot of partnerships, well established, long standing partnerships that might um, award you opportunities uh, through connections. And then one last thing before we move on is that um, the wheel that we talked about the newsletter often will have opportunities for summer work and things like that. So um, a lot of people contact our office to say, hi, we have this opportunity to do X during the summer. Um, and Maureen gathers all that information and puts it um, on the website. So, you know, you can look out in the newsletter or um, go on our website to see about summer opportunities. Um, if you guys have more questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but otherwise we'll keep moving forward um, and talk about next steps. So um, y'all will have to make a BU login. Um, if you haven't done so, um, you'll sign up for summer orientation. Um, that'll be, that's mandatory. So we look forward to seeing you during the summer. Um, if you have any transfer credits, so whether you've taken your I, A, AP courses already, or if I'm not sure what's happening with them at this point, um, or if you have IB credit, you've done dual enrollment, I maybe already said that, make sure to just send them over to BU over the summer and make note of that when we meet for um, summer advising, because we want to make sure that you're in the right courses and that we've counted all the credits that you need. Um, there'll be placement exams that occur over the summer. So if you need to take a placement exam for language or English, um, look out for that. Um, and then you'll fill out the housing survey. You're going to hear from your transitional mentors. That was a big thing we talked about today. So make sure you utilize them. It's a really nice connection. Um, they're going to be able to answer questions like what's the best dining hall to go to? Um, if I'm hungry at 11 p.m., where do I go? You know, things like that. They'll be able to answer that in like books. They might have books from courses that you've taken. So you can always check in with them like about do I need to buy this book? Where do I buy it? Things like that. Um, if you want to do FISOP and then you will hear from me about planning for your fall courses um, after today. So quickly, uh, Liz already mentioned this, but this is probably the most important um, first step on your checklist. So if you haven't already, please uh, feel free to create your BU login information. Um, and I encourage you just to use some sort of variation of your name. Um, I say that because this will stay with you forever. So if you choose to pursue graduate school at BU, um, or if you become a staff member or a faculty member, um, it will be your only BU login. So choose wisely um, and think carefully, um, but definitely something important to, for you to do first step. First step. And then just to highlight that these are the summer orientations that we offer. So just make sure you sign up for it. Um, and then that way I'm going to use this list to um, start contacting you all about registering for classes. So we want to bring to your attention um, two important links. Um, and if Noelle and Emma can just share those in our chat, that would be great. Um, but the first one is our BU Wheelock Admitted Students webpage. So Paul mentioned this early, early on. Um, Dean Chard's welcome address is, is posted there. We have a lot of other resources, videos, um, 
checklist that we mentioned today, um, but it's just a really great uh, landing page for all of the resources that you might need to utilize as you move forward and make your decision um, before matriculation. So um, please check that out. And then the undergraduate admissions office also has a similar checklist um, on their webpage. And it's a great resource um, as well. They do have virtual events that are going on um, pretty much regularly, multiple times each week. Um, so like today, you joined us for Wheelock specific virtual open house. They're also hosting um, general university open houses as well as financial aid assistance open houses. So please feel to check out all of their resources there.